Oh, hi there. Just spending my weekends, COVID life, doing some uh, car cleaning. As a uh, broke student, it's really important to keep your cars in good conditions. Perfect. Those are my meals for the week. Hi, good morning. Rachel reminded me, who's behind the camera, that we have to do some church announcements this week and I gotta get away from my cleaning, my cars, and uh, get into some announcements. So, um, welcome to church this morning. I'm Jessica. And uh, if you're new here or a church, a, a regular church attender, we're glad to have you this morning. Um, if you wanna learn a little bit about the church, please, or get connected, um, contact the church office or check out our website, which will be here. Um, the Lenten Bible study with Pastor Ron Corcoran happens on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Last week was the first study, but it's not too late to sign up. So if you want to resume the link, guess what? Contact the church office. Uh, Sherry's in there, so she would love to talk to you. Now, we are having membership information classes. That will be on March 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th at 6 p.m. Um, we do have copies of the book, Our Church, Your Home, uh, available to pick up at the church office, and you may request those books to be delivered to you. Um, okay, our district superintendent, Reverend Gordon McCain, and Pastor Gary Bennett will be leading the classes, but the final class for our church will be led by Pastor Jeremy Hyde. Um, this session is devoted to helping you understand and appreciate your local church history, vision, mission, and values. It will also be a time where you may receive help in finding your way to some specific and local avenues of ministry and service within the church. So um, we encourage you to register um, or call the church office if you want to get more information on that. Anyways, just a friendly reminder to your kids, there are some age-appropriate videos um, for your Sunday school on the website. So maybe you guys can check that out while your parents are watching the sermon today. Um, okay, have a good church. Uh, welcome here. Good morning. We want to welcome you to church this morning. It is good to be together. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 to 25 says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him.
on a winter's night Or then the tall evergreens reach for the light Or then the pounding waves long for the shore I'm no longer a 
slave to fear. I am a child of God. Our reading for today is Joshua 24, verses 14 to 18. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether your gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went, among, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land, Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. So concludes our reading for today. I am so happy to be here today. How is everybody today? I hope you've had a great week. We had some snow a couple of weeks ago. I hope you had fun playing in that. And today, there's been a few things wandering around in my brain that I just wanted to share with you that uh, that have just been really really cool to me anyway one of the things is how much i appreciate the fact that our church has lots of people of different ages in i love the fact that i get to hang out with kids that i get to hang out with older people that i get to hang out with everybody in between right now the hanging out is mainly on zoom but that's okay i also get to hang out in, in the mail, if that makes sense, and writing letters and sending cards. And one of the things that came to my mind this week was this time last year, February last year, there was an exciting thing going on in the church. We had been, the Sharps, the Sincerely Happy Association of Retired Persons, were fundraising for Wells. They are always fundraising for Wells. And last year they had been doing some walking some laps around the church and raising money for things. And the junior youth Sunday school decided to join in and help them by raising some money for them. So I don't know if you remember, one Sunday last February, we had hot chocolate in the days that we could all still get together in the fireside room. And the junior youth made hot chocolate and our wonderful church family um, gave donations for the hot chocolate. And we put the money together for the sharks for the wells. And so we all worked together. That got my brain thinking about something else, where working together looks a little bit different at the moment. And the Sharps, the Sincerely Happy Association of Retired Persons, who I also get to hang out with on a Tuesday in the days when we get to meet on a Tuesday, which we will get to do again once upon a time, um, they do some of the most amazing work. And they're always thinking of other people, finding ways to help other people and to fundraise. And one of the organizations that we help is the Victoria Pregnancy Center. It's an amazing organization that helps people when they're having babies. It helps connect them to medical things that they might need or helps connect them to government agencies for funding for things they might need. And it also helps give them clothes and all kinds of things. And a couple of years ago, the Sharps did an amazing thing where they made beautiful bags for the new mums with little presents and gifts and things to make them feel special. This year, the Victoria Pregnancy Center said, you know what, there's a lady called Gina who's the director there and she said, we could really do with some gift bags for the new babies. Well, we kind of looked at each other on Zoom and we thought, how can we do this? Because Sharps aren't getting together at the moment. We're, we're not allowed to gather, we're not allowed to meet and bring things together and, and, and put things together for, for babies. But this is where the Sharps are amazing. They knitted, they crocheted, they saved money 
they bought things for new babies, and whenever there was a drive through they brought them to the church, and we gathered them here together, and then a couple of people got together and we were able to put the bags together, and then we were able to talk to Gina, and she was able to arrange a day when, well, luckily, I was really lucky, it got to be me, I got to take all these gift bags that the Sharps had made and put together and bought things for and take them down to Gina. And she was so excited. And the wonderful thing is that she said, not simply gift bags for the new babies, but the bags themselves had all been handmade and were able to be used as um, diaper bags. And they were full of wonderful things that people had purchased and made. And even uh, thought one lady said, we've got lavender. And so we made a little special bag for all the mums too. So the mums got something as well, people who could do this, people who could do that. And it made me think that even in these different times, we are all able to do a little bit here and a little bit there in different ways and put all those things together and make something special. My grandma used to say, many littles make a lot. And she was right. And I just thank God that we have the opportunity to be part of a community where we can get involved and we can find, everybody can find something that they can do that's useful and we can put all those littles together and we can make a lot. So I'm gonna ask you to put your hands together and we'll say a prayer and uh, we'll ask a special, ask God to give us a special message about what it is that we can do. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the NAS. We thank you that we're part of this community. We thank you for people like Gina at Victoria Pregnancy Center who work so hard for the benefit of other people. We thank you for young people who have ideas and put energy into fundraising. And we thank you for seniors who spend their time and their ideas putting together things for other people. And Lord, we're just so grateful that we get together and to do that in community. Lord, I ask that this week you would put on our hearts special ways where we can do little things. And in these difficult times, they, we need to be creative. We need to come up with different ways of doing things. So Lord, help us to find those ways that we can do your work and be the, the uh, actual imprint of your hands in our world. And uh, help us, Lord, to find those ways to do things. Bless everybody listening today and the people who couldn't be with us today. Thank you for the boys and girls in the, in the NAS and all the energy and the, the love and the joy that they bring. Bless us now, Lord, and help us to listen for, for your voice this week. In your name we pray. Amen.
As we enter into this second week of Lent, we want to invite you to focus on the way in which Jesus invited us to give of ourselves. One practice that we lean a little bit more into during Lent is the practice of giving. And giving alms or giving money to the poor has been a traditional part of a focus during Lent. Just as Bridget shared this great mission of uh, supporting an agency in, in our city that we've been able to be a part of, we want to encourage you to think during this time leading up to Easter of ways in which you might give of yourself, your time, your money, and in that way identify with Christ in the same way that he gave all that he had gave of himself totally for us. Wouldn't it be amazing if during the time leading up to Easter, people in our community would recognize that Easter was coming not because there's chocolate bunnies in the shelves at the grocery store, but because they see us as Christians giving of ourselves and the impact that we would have on our community. So we invite you during this time to identify with Christ by giving of yourselves. And now please join me as we pray. God, we thank you for the way that you give of yourself uh, all the time freely to us. And even in this moment, we might experience the life-giving presence of your spirit with us. Pray that as we lead up to Easter, that you would help us think of different ways that we might give of ourselves, our time, our money, our, our strength, our effort. Maybe it's even uh, paying attention and being present to others in our neighborhood in a, in a different way, in a more intentional way. Please help lead us and guide us as we identify with Christ as we identify with how you gave of yourself fully to us. Pray for those that are struggling this week and are maybe going through health concerns or crisis, and we pray that you would be present to them. May they know your loving arms surrounding them and comforting them, and help us as a community of faith to respond to those in need. And now we pray your blessing on Pastor Jimmy as he brings to us his first sermon to us as a community. We just pray that you would give him the words that you want to share with us. And we pray that you would uh, inspire him, that you would fill him with your spirit and bless him as he serves us through the sharing of the word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, good morning again, everyone, and it is so good to see you all here today. It's great to be worshiping with you, even through this virtual feed that we have to do it in, but it is good to be here. My name is Pastor Jimmy, and I am the new lead pastor here at Victoria Church of the Nazarene. And again, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has helped make this first couple of weeks here in Canada so amazing. This church is special, and the people here are special, and I just feel so thrilled to be a part of it with you. Now, I know as we get started here this morning, as, as we turn into the Word and we look to see what God has for us today, that in the midst of all that, there's a lot of questions that are happening. Even though we, you may have heard what's going on and what's going to happen next, uh, there's still a lot of questions out there. Like, what's my role going to be? If I'm the lead pastor, why is somebody else doing most of the preaching? Why do we have Pastor Dave doing uh, as our preaching pastor? What is he going to do? And I just want to let you know that uh, we will actually be having some further discussion and video on that just so that you guys can get a better feel for how things are going to look and work. And hopefully we get to experiment with that a little bit more when one day we get to open up again. But in the meantime, we will try to keep you all abreast of the situation, let you know uh, what's going on. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to the office or to me. Uh, my email is pastorjimmyhigh at gmail.com. And I would love to hear from you 
if you have anything. But as we enter into the word today, why don't you pray with me? Father, I pray that you would bless this time, that you would bless these words that we're about to read today, that you would speak into them, that you would speak into the words that I am speaking out today. Lord, change us and mold us this morning, and don't let any one of us leave the same. We love you, in Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Now, you may have noticed, but the church here has been in a time of transition for, well, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Now, so many things have happened in the midst, and we've had so many great teams that are part of this church that have helped make sure the church is running, and, and we went out, and I got to meet them even before I came here, and in all honesty, this church has done amazing in this interim period. But as this time has drawn to a close, there are still a lot of questions out there, and I understand some, some people, even in the midst of the excitement, have to be wondering, well, okay, he's here. We've been trying, to, we've been trying and working for this day for uh, over a year now. Now what? What happens next? You may even have a little bit of anxiety over it. Like, is it going to be better than it was before? Is it going to be worse than it was before? Are things going to keep moving in a positive direction, or is this guy just going to destroy everything? I get it. But luckily, we are not the first or the only people of God that has ever had to go through a transition time. And so today, I actually want to take a look in our scriptures at just such a time. So if you have your Bibles with you, otherwise it will be on the screen in front of you. We are going to be today looking at Joshua, the 24th chapter, and we're going to be starting in verse 14. Now, while you're getting there, let me give you a little bit of background and history of what's happening. This is Joshua, who will be talking to the people here. And this is the same Joshua that was Battle of Jericho, you know, walk around the town so many times, blow the trumpets, walls come down, right? He was the one that had to take over after Moses. And if you know anything about the life of Moses, he was the guy that you didn't want to follow as a leader. But God had put him in that spot, in that place, and then his life was spent leading the Israelites into the next steps that God had in their story. Now, please hear me when I say I am definitely, definitely, definitely not, a, not putting myself anywhere near Joshua in this story here because I actually want to take a look at not the transition between Moses and Joshua but Joshua and the end of his life it's a fascinating story and as he comes to the end of his time as he comes to the end of his life he starts to look around and see okay we need to have a discussion so he pulls all the people together he pulls the Israelites together, and he gathers them, and he starts to tell them a story. And in this story, he discusses and talks about what God had done from the very beginning. He talked about what God had done in Egypt, what God had done in the wilderness, what God had done in their first beginning times in this new land, this new land of Canaan. And how he was with them all the way up into this point. And then after he finishes this little story, he says these words. So again, this is Joshua chapter 24, starting at verse 14. Where Joshua says, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. The people replied, we would never abandon the Lord. And serve other gods. 
For the Lord our God is the one who rescues us and our ancestors from slavery in the land of Egypt. He performed mightily miracles before our very eyes. As we traveled through the wilderness among our enemies, he preserved us. It was the Lord who drove out the Amorites and the other nations that lived here in this land. So we, too, will serve the Lord, for he alone is our God. Now, Joshua could have done quite a few different things here. As he was coming up to the end of his time, he knew that eventually he wasn't going to be there to lead anymore. He knew that the people around him were going to have to take their own steps. And yet, it's really interesting to see what Joshua didn't do in this situation, just as much as what he did do. Because in this time period, he didn't prop up a new leader, or say, hey, you guys should really follow that guy next. He didn't come at them and tell them, hey, when I'm gone, remember all the amazing things that I did. He didn't even come up to them and say, okay, I'm going to be gone soon, so you need to do this, 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 and this. Actually, from a management standpoint, that would probably, in our day and age, look like he just wasn't taking very good care of the future. Because instead of starting with what was going to come, instead of starting with the future, Joshua started by looking backwards. Not just looking backwards. But Joshua had told them this story. The story of how God was interwoven throughout all of these major points in their life. How it was God who was with them from the beginning and in the midst of the difficult times and in the midst of the good times and was the sole creator of so many of these opportunities. Facing the end of his time, Joshua points the Israelites backwards to remind them that they're part of something bigger. He points them back and shows and tells them, it's not just been your story. It's not just been my story. We have been on a journey in God's story. And look back, we look at God's story from the very beginning and we see where he was at and we see where he was moving and working. And even today in our own lives, we can do this. We can look backwards and, so, and see how God has been a part of our lives and in these moments. And we can look back and say, it's not just been my story. This is God's story. And so Joshua points the people backwards. But then does something very interesting. He doesn't just say, okay, that's the way it was, so make sure you keep doing that, otherwise you're doomed. Or just, he doesn't look at them and say, okay, well, just keep things going, it'll be fine. In the midst of everybody around him, all of the people, many of them who have Many of the same questions we probably have in our own transition time. What happens now? Joshua looks at them and says, you have a choice to make. Things don't just automatically continue. We can't just put things on cruise control. When I'm gone, you're going to have to make a choice. Are you a part of God's story? Or are you going to go back to something else? Now, I know this seems kind of cliche, but as a pastor here, but I do like books, okay? And I even like to read them at times. They don't just look pretty behind my desk. Uh, I do like to read them. And there's something about physical books that is just so much fun to me. I know it's kind of sick sounding, but anything from the brand new books where they smell nice and and, and like the, the, the spines crack when you open them, all the way to the books 
that, uh, that I've read over and over again and are so dog-eared and messed up. But there's something inside of books that I really feel like gets overlooked, even as important they are. It's called chapters. Some of you are wondering, where on earth is this pastor going? Okay, chapters. He likes chapters. Great. Now, there's something about chapters in a book that I think is important to remember. Chapters have their own little purpose. They create gaps in space in the story. They allow us to sort of close one part of the book without actually finishing the book itself. It allows us to meditate and dwell on what happened before we move on. Chapters are in a book individually can sometimes mean nothing, but together they make up this whole beautiful grand story. And inside of these chapters, we may have exciting chapters. We may have just kind of boring foundational chapters. We may have chapters that introduce new characters, heroes or villains. Many times chapters don't resolve themselves. They need more added to it. But in Joshua's time, he was telling the people that this isn't the end of a book. This isn't the end of a story. This is the end of a chapter. And whether or not you make it to the next one depends solely on your decision. Because I'll be honest, chapters are also very dangerous. I like reading multiple books at a time, which is absolutely horrible for me, but I do it because I leave books in different places. I have to work on that sometimes. But the problem with chapters is sometimes maybe it's the end of a chapter you didn't enjoy. Or maybe you just set it down because you were done reading for the time and it was a good place to stop. There's an intentional moment that you actually have to pick it back up and move to the next page. Because otherwise, we can just forget about it. The story doesn't really complete itself. We forget about it. It stays on the side. And what Joshua was telling his people was to turn the page. Something's going to be different. Something's going to be new. And he didn't try to tell them what that was going to be. The only thing he told them was to choose, to decide, to continue the story with God, or to go do something else. Now he tells them very firmly, That as for him and his house, he's going to turn the page. He's moving to the next chapter. Not forgetting what was behind. Not forgetting what, uh, what what had already come before. But actually taking that story that he had, that the Israelites had already been part of. And preparing for the chapter that follows. Choosing this day to continue with this story that God is writing and has called us to be a part of. Now, I don't know where you're at in your life. And yes, in this first time with you, I have talked a lot about the church and and what we're going to do and who we are as a family and where we're going. But even individually, I don't know exactly where you're at today. I don't know what the last chapter of your life was like. I don't know if it was exciting or horrible. I don't know if you're excited to turn into the next chapter or you'd rather maybe just leave it alone. But today we have a choice. And every day that follows, we have to make the same choices. Do we continue in God's story? 
Do we turn the page? Do we make it? Do we continue on? And continue with what God has already started in our lives. We don't know what's going to happen in the future here. I'm excited about what God has in store in your life and in the life of this church. But today I hope you can commit with me that no matter what God has in store for us, that no matter what the future has that is yet to come, that as a people, you and me and all of us can come together and say no matter what, today and every day after, we are going to choose to serve the Lord. We're going to choose to turn the page. Won't you pray with me? Our gracious and heavenly Father, we are so humbled to have been called to be part of this story that you have written and been a part of since the beginning of time. And Lord, we look backwards at the stories that we've read and learned about from way back in ancient history. And then we think back to our own lives and our own examples where we have seen you work and move in the great and miraculous things you have done in our lives and in this church. And we give you the thanks for those parts of the story. But Lord, as we sit here on the edge, completing one chapter, I pray that you would give us the courage to turn the page to the next. Not knowing what may be written there, not knowing what you may have in store for us, but to turn that page and to begin the story into this new season that we'll be taking as a church. Lord, we know that you're already there in front of us. So I pray that you would guide us and guide our steps, that you would lead us fresh and anew forward, that you would give us vision, that you would put power behind our mission, that you would ignite a fire in all of your people to see your will done right here in Victoria, just, just as it is in heaven. So, Father, bless us. Bless all those who are here watching now and later in the week. May your spirit fall on us today. And may you prepare us for the next page. We love you. We can't wait to see what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray it all. Amen. There's more that rises in the morning than the sun. More that shines in the night than just the moon. It's more than just this fire here that keeps me warm. In a shelter that is larger than this room There's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment And a music higher than the songs that I can sing The stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things So if I stand Stand on the promise that you will pull me through. And if I can't let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you, if I sing, let me sing for the joy.
ocean than the tide There's a love that's fiercer than the love between friends More gently than a mother's when a baby's at her side And there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment A music higher than the songs that I can sing Stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things So if I stand, let me stand on the promise That you will pull me through Now may God bless you and keep you. May make his face shine upon you. And may we go boldly into the future, expecting amazing things in this new chapter that God has placed in front of us. Go in the peace of the Lord today. time and uh, I was gonna say one more thing okay just keep it going I'll clip that no problem it's an expensive foot holder <laughs> all right well we're gonna be down here and then we'll be up here sometimes but only sometimes, and then we'll probably come back down here. And if I'm really serious, maybe even lower here. But I never heard myself, though. Sounded great. All right, fine. Record.